Park Australia, I'm going to be putting a stereo into the little Hyundai Gets. So here's my stereo and speakers. Just grab them from uh, one of the shops in town. So we'll have a look in here. I'm going to show you the before and after. So here's the original stereo that doesn't work anymore. So I've got to replace that with the uh, new one that's on the car there. There's our speakers. So there's a speaker in every door. So I'm going to go through the process of removing and putting the speaker in one door. It's just to repeat over and over again. So there's a screw there in the handle. There's another screw behind that little um, cover. And then we've got lots of screws around the trim. Some of them are easily found, but then you get down the bottom, there's one there. Then we've got our drain holes there in the bottom of the door to let water out. Then we come up and the ones on the back here that open on the door, they've got little plastic covers over them. There's one and there's two. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove those and then gently remove the door skin. Um, now it's got power windows as well, this one. It's a pretty um, good little car. It's got a few options. So I've removed the flap there so you can see the screw. So that's a little flap you just price it out with a screwdriver. <coughs> so just popping out with a flat blade. So I'm gonna remove all the screws. Now you just get I've removed the screws, just get your screwdriver to pop it off a couple of clips there, then the door trim's loose. Now what you'll see, like everything you do have a crack at, sometimes it won't come loose. So if you feel a door a car panel you've undone it all and it won't come loose it's obviously got something else still holding it so what you'll see here is the door handle at the top won't let it come free yet there's two little um, connector rods one for the lock one for the door handle so you can see that door handle is not going to let it come off the door so now I have to remove the door handle first I'm going to do a zoom in here in a sec so door handle out there's a rod at the top and the bottom. There's little plastic clips on there you've got to flick off. You can do it with your finger if you've got strong fingers. There it is there, a little pink clip. You pull that off the rod there and then the rod pops out. And exactly the same on the bottom. You flick that clip off the rod and then the handle slides off, which is going to free it up and allow it to come off. So this is the same on all four doors. So I'm not going to do all four. You only need to see one. So if we have a look here, Bit of a good shaky camera for me so i'm gonna remove that that's the wiring loom that clicks onto the door handle where the window control is the up and down for your power window so you've got to remove that to release the door panel and now we've just got the speaker sitting there screwed in on its factory mounts there so i'm going to remove the old speaker and disconnect the wiring from the clips because the new speakers won't uh, match those clips so just going to remove that there now And there's a, you can see there's a mounting um, moulding there that holds the speaker. So what you do when you go to get new speakers, you get the same size. Unless you want to do a lot of work in the door to remount the bigger speaker. So the speakers I've got will fit straight into that actual mounting. I don't have to do any work. The clips, the factory clips, aren't going to suit me new speakers. So I'm just pulling the wiring off. And that'll get rid of one speaker. And then I cut the other one off and crimp link it to the new speaker which you'll see in a very short time here. We'll be doing that. So there we remove the speaker. We've got our clip. Now I'm just going to remove that because it doesn't suit the new speaker. So now I've got a sheathing there. It's a bit um, baked on after so many years in the sun usually try and strip it with pliers, it's not going to do the game, so I'll get a knife and cut it. So you've got to be very careful not to cut yourself or the cables when doing so. So I'm going to slice it here in a minute and then you'll um, see the two wires in there. So those two wires I'm going to join directly to the speaker wires. The speakers have their own little connection wire that comes with the two spade terminals. So in there you can see the umbilical cord between the door, that curly one there. That's got all the cables for the speaker and the uh, power windows going through that little curly sort of conduit thing. So I've just got my knife cutting away from myself so I don't cut my hand because that'll spoil me day. 
got the good old shake with my fingers as usual so there's the red and uh, the orange and the blue wire that I'm going to use to connect to the new speaker so you can see the insulation's a bit stuck to it there so I'm just preparing it to put the little crimp on so I'm just going to strip it there in the handle of these pliers, the electrician's pliers, there's a little crimper in the handle just in front of the yellow insulation there, you're going to see me use it in a second here so you could solder these connections, um, I was a little bit lazy, I just used the crimps that come with the speaker kit so um, if you want to do a really flash job you could solder it but uh, it's not going to really affect the performance of the stereo on this one so just get a little packet of crimps here so they come with the speakers, um, I've also got a, um, any good uh, person that tinkers with cars will have a a little fishing tackle box full of all different uh, cable connections so you slide him on there and then I'll just use the handles and the pliers here to crimp it in the back there so I'm just showing you that so it goes in, in there and you give it a good crimp you can get um, crimping tools um, from most of your hardware stores or auto stores um, being an electrician I've got I'll just use my pliers so they've got a special crimping tool there and as you look in the bottom there's the crimp onto the wire to stop it coming off so whenever you crimp a wire you just after you've crimped it, just give it a little bit of a pull to see that it's actually crimped correctly. If it's crimped co correctly, it won't come off. If it's not, it'll uh, straight, come straight off in your hand. So then you have to do it again with it, another crimp. Now with the speaker, here's the speaker. Now there's got two spade terminals. One of them's a standard spade terminal and one's a really miniature one. So that's why I've got to join that. Normally I would just put the crimp straight on that cable there in my left hand but I'm just going to use the little lead that come with the speaker because it's got a special little crimper, the little spade terminal so we just hook him up um, the polarity on the speakers, unless you're a um, really sound buff person it's not going to matter too much so the little black wires, your trace wire that's usually your seat positive wire and the other one's your negative but um, unless you're going into a sound competition and want really cool sound um, doesn't really matter the polarity um, and if you're going to sound competitions you wouldn't be putting this one in to be a much better system this is just a um, budget friendly one shall we say so here's the speaker so you'll see this two spade terminals one thin one thick now you've got to support the bottom of that thing, you'll see me, I'll slide my finger around underneath it because if you push too hard you'll break that little mount so I'm putting my fingers on the mount while I slide the clip on so I don't break it now I'm putting the other one on and it's a bit hard to see I've got my other finger I'll have my finger there when I push it in grab on that panel there you go, put my little finger there and I support it as I wiggle it on so I don't snap that little bracket off so you've got to be very gentle with that and then you slide your little insulation up over it to protect it and then we've just got the fun of putting back in you've got a little slot there for the cable to go into the back of the mount and the speaker just slides straight in there and bolts directly to that mount because I've got the same size speakers that were in the original stereo so we'll get that done then we just reassemble the door in the reversed manner of what we just did before. So you just go backwards on your steps. So, and I've showed you how to get door skins off before on me, um, one of my other cars. So. So now to the stereo. Now to remove that, just got a little flat blade screwdriver, this little metal clip. So I remove the little shroud from around the outside. There's little clips on the side that release it and they just pull straight out generally, if you're lucky. Um, this one's got the wiring snagging it up in the back there. And there's also the antenna wire for the outside radio antenna. That's that black wire closest to screen at the top. It's a little bit hard to see as so I'm wiggling the camera around. 
So there's your wiring harness going back into the car. Now yeah, a bit brutal here getting it out because it's um, stuck in there a bit that's been in there for 14 years so it's uh, well and truly stuck. That clip it has got a bit hot so I'm a little bit brutal getting it out but I do get it out successfully because I want to keep it intact because when you get a car stereo you can actually when you with your cars now you just buy a wiring harness that'll suit the vehicle and the stereo that you bought so you just plug into that grey plug there I'm trying to get out and then it just takes it straight to the stereo unfortunately in this case I couldn't get the exact one so I've got the plug that'll go into the car and then I just um, join to the stereo because you buy the um, looms and they'll be the exact same colours as what's coming out of stereo so you just go colour for colour when you join it so there's no real issue of trying to work out what's your speakers, what's your power, what's your accessories so you just plug it in and go so been very brutal there now I've got it out and we dispose of stereo that doesn't work straight in the bin there we go now you can see the loom, the black plug that I've plugged into the grey plug and then you can see the purples and greens and that they line up with the cables that come off the stereo so the stereo has the exact same colour so that anyone can line that up it's not too hard at all so you just need to get a plug that's for the make of your vehicle if it's not the right stereo one and then you just cut the plugs like the brown plug off you cut that off and connect it to your stereo cable now I had a bit of trouble fitting this in so that's the actual outside shroud that holds the stereo in my hands now you, you can see the old one still in there and I could not get it out because there's a rivet in the back and the center there that's actually not a bolt where my hand is there now it's actually a metal rivet and I could not get it out for love nor money I gave it everything I could do to try and get it out so I had to do a fairly how would you say agricultural um, installation of this bracket so the one in my hand there now you slide that and those little those little slots little triangle slots you fold them up to grab into the dash of the vehicle and that's what actually holds your stereo in place so you just push them up with a screwdriver when they're in the dash and lock them up in behind the actual dash and that holds the stereo in place for you so you don't need any screws So as I said, of course I couldn't get the old bracket out. Usually there's a bolt at the back end to do the bolt, slide that out, but the one in my hand slides straight in. But as usual, it can't go as well as you'd want to. So I had to remove a couple of mil out of that bracket and I did it in the, let's just say it's an agricultural version, but it holds in. Um, you'll see in a little while, yeah, I'm just looking at the rivet there, I could not get that damn thing out. See, I got a screwdriver there trying to break it or bend it out. It would not release, and there was no real way of getting any tool in there to cut it. And it was just, yeah. And if, if you look at my arms and knuckles, I'm already bleeding a bit from all the sharp edges in behind there. So it's not a, not my most favourite task putting car stereos in, but um, as I say, it's... Um, it's not hard to do them these days with the looms, you just plug them in, but the hard bit's getting the bugger in there. So as you can see, I've done a very agricultural thing and basically just cut a couple of millimetres out of the bracket by cutting it in half and shoving it in there so it will work. So here's the one, that's what comes with the stereo in my hand now. And I'm just going to cut the brown plug off in the background and unplug those other ones and join colour for colour. So that's the easy bit, you just go green to green, white to white, and they'll have little stripes on them. So the white with a black stripe goes the white with black stripes. So you just match the colours, colour for colour, and it'll work perfectly. So saves you tracing it all out in the car and working out what's what. You just use those and join, join them. So most um, car, car stores will have those looms on the wall. They might not have the exact one. In the case with me, they didn't have the exact one I wanted, but they did have one that suited the car, but not the stereo. So, here I am again, I'm just going to crimp link these in. So we'll do a bit of a skip and a jump here and um, get that all done in there. So, just getting it all, there's my little fishing tackle box full of little connectors. So that I don't have to go running around to find a new connector when I need one, I've always got one on hand.
So as you can see, I've just about finished joining colour for colour here. So it's getting very close to being finished. So you can see at the top left that little black plug with a right angle silver joint coming out. That's the antenna cable for the car radio. So just finish off last but not least. I'm just going to dud that off because I don't have a connection for that one. So don't leave loose wires around. So that's plugged into the stereo. Beautiful. And then in goes the aerial connection. Done. And then slides into my agriculturally adapted bracket there. So it's a bit of a bit of a muck, muck about, but it will go in there. There we go. Make, make sure it's all neat. Don't. So I've got my hand in there pulling the cables back so I don't jam any cables and break them. So I'm going to push that in and it will click into place. And that bracket will hold it from coming out. So last little bit there now. Just putting the bracket on. Now we have the finished product with the stereo in the front face clipped in and all working, listening to a little bit of music. So all went well, um, did lose a bit of blood, but that's what happens on a stereo install. So once again, thank you very much for watching and hope you enjoyed it and um, look forward to making some more.